The truth is these foods are designed to be overconsumed, and without telling consumers how these foods are gonna um, you know, affect their behavior, when they try to moderate their consumption of these pita chips or the pint of ice cream, and they end up feeling like moral failures because they, they just simply can't, mm -hmm. that I think is where the problem lies. So for most of us then that uh, that know that Alzheimer's and dementia, that these numbers seem to be increasing and increasing, and your mom, you said 59? She was 58 when 58 she first started, years yeah. old, I mean, that's incredibly young. So let's talk about some of those things that you can do before, they, before you're sitting at the doctor's office and they're giving you the, the 10 medications. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the first thing that you need to realize is that dementia often begins in the brain decades before the first symptom. And I saw that nobody was talking about this, and that's why I decided to step up, you know? I, it, it, it didn't, the fact that I wasn't a medical doctor to me didn't seem like a barrier to entry because I, I genuinely believe that people should know how to care for their bodies and their brains and we're just not taught this. Um, we're fed misinformation from every conceivable angle whether it's the food industry and the way that they market their foods, uh, making health claims on their products to the way that uh, the media um, reports on, on health studies and, and research and things like that. So. I think, I mean, what I've learned is that you really, uh, that the, 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 the standard American diet is toxic, essentially. And anything that you can do to run in the opposite direction of that. So what is the standard American diet? If you're painting that picture, yeah. like, what, what does that really look like? There are, I mean, there are images that you can, like you can go to Google Images and you can search for the average, uh, you know, shopping hall for your typical American family over the course of a week. And mm -hmm. essentially it's all processed foods. Um, ultra processed foods to be to be more clear. Today, 60% of the calories that we're consuming come from what are called ultra, ultra processed foods, um, which are made in factories. They usually are the processed permutations of wheat, corn, and rice, maybe some soy. And they generally are what food scientists refer to as being hyper palatable. So they, they're extremely calorie dense. They're not satiating. In fact, they actually can make you hunger, yeah. hu hungry later on. Um, they these, often put additives in there, right, that actually make you want more, right? Isn't that the Dorito effect or something? Well, I think it's the fact that, I mean, these foods are just, they're, they're, they become impossibly delicious when you combine sugar, fat, salt. Um, you know, these are, I mean, each of these flavors were relatively scarce in antiquity, and today they're just abundantly available. Mm -hmm. Like, sugar would be available to a hunter-gatherer, you know, once per year when it was summer and the fruit, you know, became ripe. Um, and even then, the, the fruits that would be available to one of our ancestors would be a fraction as sweet as they are today. Right, um, right, the amount of apples that you would have to eat to get the sugar levels that you could get in a bag of Sour Patch Kids or something. Yeah, is like the insane. ancestral apple yeah. is like a crab apple, right. essentially. And today, right. you know, we have like these cosmic crisp apples that are amazing, like don't get me wrong. I'm a huge uh, fan of, of apples, but they're bred to contain more starch and sugar than ever before in, in, in history. And they're also bred, a lot of our produce now is being bred to remove these bitter compounds, which are actually compounds that probably produce the greatest health benefit when we consume them, like polyphenols and flavonoids and things like that. Um, so sugar, fat we know is, is highly delectable. Uh, you know, I mean, it sends off um, our, our, you know, brain's reward centers, like, it's one of the reasons why we put half and half in our coffee. It just allows flavors to linger on the tongue. Um, and then salt, you know, the word salary derives from salt. It was, uh, it was something that was, it's super important, you know, we need it for good health. Um, sodium is a macro mineral. It's also one of these nutrients that's been demonized over the past couple of, uh, decades, but you combine them all together, and it's basically like the Fourth of July's, you know, fireworks in the <laughs> brain, yeah. and it makes it impossible to moderate our consumption of these foods. And so, one of the one of the ideas that I put forth in the Genius Life, I try to really make dietary recommendations without further harming people's relationship with food. I think mm -hmm. people today have this fractured relationship with food. Yeah, and I always see when, I, when I'm at Trader Joe's, they have guilt-free uh, pita chips, and I'm always like, the fact that the world the word guilt is on there. Yeah. Like, if, like the idea that you'd be buying a regular pita chip and feel guilty about it is kind of crazy. Putting aside whether you want carbs or breads or right. whatever, but like the way it's all marketed, guilt, these are guilt free. Right. Like, so you can walk out of here and you're not gonna feel guilty. Like, yeah. that's not the stuff you should feel guilty over. No, it's ridiculous. I mean, the, the truth is these foods are designed to be overconsumed, and without telling consumers how these foods are gonna, um, 
you know, affect their behavior when they try to moderate their consumption of these pita chips or the pint of ice cream and they end up feeling like moral failures because they, they just simply can't. Mm -hmm. That I think is where the problem lies. On the other hand, if you actually are aware that these foods, um, you know, they're so easily over-consumed, uh, then it, bec it becomes informed consent. You know, then you actually know what you're opting into and then there shouldn't be any guilt about that. You're just making, you're an adult making a decision, which you should be able to do. You should be able to eat whatever you want. But the problem is I think that most people don't know that these foods actually drive over consumption. There was a great study that was published and I, I wrote about what these hyperpalatable ultra-processed foods do to, to our behavior in Genius Foods, but since Genius Foods came out, there was a great study that was published. Um, it actually was funded by the National Institutes of Health and they found that when people were given um, all you can eat access to an ultra processed diet, it's called ad libitum feeding, that people tend to over consume about 500 additional calories uh, to reach the point of satiety. So to just eat until t to a point of fullness, uh -huh. people tend to over consume about 500 calories a day. And you're more inclined to do that by eating processed With foods, these ultra processed just because foods. of the way yeah. they're making you feel. Bagels, muffins, pizzas, burritos, chicken dishes, um, potato chips, sandwiches, mm -hmm. things like that. You know, the foods that are, that are primarily uh, packaged, shelf stable, um, devoid of moisture, which actually can, can um, be satiating when food has water in it, but you know, water is, uh, it makes food spoil. It, it, like you have to remove the water to make a, a product shelf stable. So they're not satiating. They can often induce what's called biphasic hunger, so they can make you hungry later on. And yeah, 500 additional calories a day, that, uh, a day, that might not seem like a lot, but stretched out over the course of a week, that's a pound of fat gain. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, so it was a crossover study, and when they put these same people, when they gave them access to foods that were minimally processed, again, ad libitum feeding, they were able to eat until they were full, um, to the same degree of satiety, they actually under-consumed about 300 calories uh, a day. So what that's gonna do is lead to effortless weight loss. So that's really kind of like the switch that I think people need to, people need to be aware of that. Yeah. You know, we, t we tend to think that we have full agency when it comes to our meal choices, but we don't. I mean, we're, um, our actions are the end result of, of an interplay between hormones, neurotransmitters, which are ultimately influenced by the types of foods that we're eating. Do you think more than anything else, though, you're always, as someone that cares about this and you're trying to get people to change their habits, it's really always about fighting a marketing machine that is oddly yeah. ahead of you. So like if you just turn on television and every commercial you see for like a breakfast food, suddenly they try to make everything healthy, but you know, it's like an egg that you crack in this thing and then it's got all this other stuff already in there and it sort of seems healthy. You're kind of like, oh, I'm eating an egg in the morning and it kind of seems right. And then I'm sure that when you look at the instructions or the uh, ingredients on the back, it's like, yeah, the sodium and everything else. But, yeah. but you have to fight that constantly because they're marketing it all as healthy. Yeah, I mean, food marketing, it's, uh, you know, they, they put products at eye level, they market to children, you know, they get those, they've, they've forged those habits early in life. They become, you know, in, exponentially more difficult to break. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, I'm human, so I eat processed foods too, right? Like I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody else. But I think to be aware, I mean, knowledge is power at the end of the day and to be able to act on that knowledge, I mean, that's the most empowering um, aspect of all of this because, you know, like health is something that, healthcare is something that we, that we do when we're like pushing the shopping cart through the, you know, the aisles of the supermarket or actually avoiding the aisles because that's where all the ultra processed foods tend to, tend to be. And you know, when we're debating with ourselves whether or not to get to the gym, um, that's really where healthcare happens. Mm -hmm. What I experienced with my mom was sick care and the relative lack of options once you actually have one of these like chronic diseases that has set in. And so, at the end of the day, the food industry doesn't have your back. Um, I mean, the food industry is great in many. It's, it's, not, it's, it's an not, industry like anything else. It's an else. industry. It's not all bad. I mean, food, <laughs> yeah. is, food is safer. Right. You know, we're we're exposed to fewer pathogens than ever before. Um, you know, f w the hunger is less of an issue today than it is in the past. If you're in the developed world, the developed world. But a lot of these conditions that we're seeing society now struggle with are lifestyle mediated. They're mediated by. Um, being, you know, overly sedentary by basing our diet around these ultra-processed foods and... You know, um, it's funny, I'm noticing now at Whole Foods, just because we're in the midst of this odd thing with coronavirus, that nobody, at least at my Whole Foods, nobody's touching the grains that you can do yourself. You know, they've got the that like, wall yeah. of grains. It's like nobody's even going over there anymore, which is, pro I guess, good at the moment, but, you know, who knows? Yeah. 
Uh, a lot of people are now using these hand sanitizers. If you like go on Amazon, it's the, the markup has just shot up exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, but something that I think few people appreciate is that when you use a hand sanitizer before you go shopping and then you touch the store register receipt, these store register receipts are actually coated with bisphenol A, which is a pretty potent endocrine disruptor. That hand sanitizer, when you use it just before or even just after you touch these receipts, it actually dramatically, by at least an order of magnitude, increases um, the permeability of your skin to these compounds. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about lifestyles, instead of nonstop yelling, check out our lifestyle playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're both right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.